from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. Henrico police mourn one of their own and some good news on the COVID-19 vaccination front. We'll have details in today's Henrico News Minute for Monday, March 1st, 2021. It's brought to you today by Henrico County. And now for the news. A very difficult weekend for Henrico police as the division lost one of its leaders. 33-year veteran Captain Donald L. Lambert Jr. was off duty when he was struck and killed by a car on Greenwood Road in Glen Allen. The driver then fled the scene, but police did make an arrest in the case yesterday morning. Lambert was the captain of the division's special operations group and worked on traffic safety programs, among many other responsibilities. Chief Eric English said that Lambert was a selfless leader, a mentor, and friend who served the community with pride and dedication for nearly 34 years. The incident attracted dozens of police vehicles and police officers as they searched for the driver. Yesterday in King William County, they arrested 30-year-old Justin Regensburg of Chesterfield. He faces two felony hit-and-run counts, one count related to hitting an occupied vehicle and another related to hitting a pedestrian. He's being held at the Henrico Jail without bond. Today is the first day of March, and this could be a very good month for COVID-19 vaccinations locally and nationally. This week, the state of Virginia is expected to receive Almost 500,000 doses of vaccine, if not more. That's according to State Vaccine Coordinator and Henrico Health Director Danny Avula. Those doses include 180,000 total first doses from Moderna and Pfizer, as well as 69,000 doses from Johnson & Johnson, whose vaccine just earned emergency use approval. The total also includes 130,000 second doses from Moderna and Pfizer and 52,000 first doses of vaccine for use by CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Kroger Food Line, and a number of other partner pharmacies statewide. Now the supply of Johnson & Johnson doses is expected to drop off next week and the subsequent week, but should return back to this week's level by the final week in March as the company ramps up its production. Just about all of the new pharmacy and grocery store partners are able to work with the Virginia Department of Health to register people who had already pre-registered with their local health departments or through the state. State officials anticipate that they'll be able to complete vaccination efforts for all portions of Phase 1B by mid-April at the latest. Well, for some, navigating through the COVID vaccination process can be a little tricky, trying to figure out when you might be called, how to tell if the call or email you receive is legitimate or not. So we've compiled a list of frequently asked questions along with their answers for you as you are trying to navigate this process. You can find it on HenricoCitizen.com by clicking on COVID-19 and then COVID-19 vaccination. The number of new confirmed cases of COVID-19 continue to drop in Henrico over the weekend. 96 cases were reported Saturday and just 57 yesterday. That brought the seven-day average number of new daily cases in the county down to 70. Unfortunately, we're just now starting to get a look at the number of deaths that were related to the virus in the post-holiday surge. A total of 115 in Henrico alone have been confirmed and reported in the past seven days. It has taken a little while for some of these deaths to be made public because the VDH has been working through a post-holiday surge of them and is just now processing a number of death certificates. These totals have brought the county's death toll overall to 487. Also on Friday, the county reported its highest single-day total of new hospitalizations related to the virus, 18. That was followed up by five Saturday and one yesterday. Catching you up on a little school board news from last Thursday that we didn't get to last week. The school board advanced its $665.2 million budget proposal for the coming fiscal year to the Henrico Board of Supervisors. It voted unanimously during a work session that day to endorse it. No one spoke at a scheduled public hearing earlier during the meeting. 
The budget does not include funding announced earlier this month by Henrico manager John Vitokas that will cover significant pay raises for all eligible county employees, including a minimum 6.8% raise for teachers. That funding will be included when supervisors adopt their final budget later this spring. The school system's budget proposal represents about a 3.6% increase from its current fiscal year budget. Also during Thursday's meeting, the board received an update about plans for a new long-term contract for its middle school wireless network and also one for its high school laptop program. It's expected to authorize both within the next month or so. The middle school network contract essentially will double the number of Wi-Fi access points in each of the county's 12 middle schools. It will also provide service at 14 other program and administrative sites such as the James River Juvenile Detention Facility. The existing six-year contract provides access points in every other classroom but doesn't include any in the school's gymnasiums or cafeterias. The new contract will provide them in every classroom and also gyms and cafeterias. The current deal is for $852,000 per year, and Henrico Schools Technology Director Brian Maddox told the school board that he couldn't divulge specific bid amounts publicly for the new proposals, but that they were relatively low. Maddox and his team also are evaluating bids for a new four-year contract for the provision of laptops to high school students and faculty. The existing $4.3 million annual contract with Dell is for more than 18,000 laptops, and it ends in June. The school system made national headlines in the spring of 2001 when it became the first system in the nation to provide a laptop to every high school student through a contract with Apple. Four years later, it switched to Dell and has remained with that company since. Friday, the Virginia Department of Transportation's Richmond District began what it's calling a long-term tree debris cleanup effort following the ice storms earlier this month. The majority of damage happened south of the river, but there were a number of affected areas in Henrico as well. The cleanup process is expected to last two to three months. Now in Henrico, the county maintains its own secondary roads. Those are any roads without a state route number, but VDOT maintains the others. Today's Henrico News Minute is brought to you by the Henrico County Broadband Survey. The county is gathering information about Internet access and speed in different locations throughout the county and needs your help. You can visit speedtest.henrico.us to take the test and find out your Internet speed.